Okay, guys, um, in this new series of videos I'm making, I'm going to go through the externals from last year. Um, I would like to show you where you can find them for yourself. If you go on to the QCA website, simply Google QCA chemistry assessment, scroll down and you will find past papers and where you see the orange highlighted new, those are the 2021 externals. So I'm going to go through the multiple choice question book first, then paper one, then paper two. All the answers are in the marking guide. So I would suggest you obviously get these for yourselves, download them, and then you can follow me when I'm going through them in this video. Okay, so let's bring the multiple choice up and go through that first. Uh, I'll be doing this in probably two, two separate videos because the length of the videos doesn't allow me to do it all in one. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. Right, question one, melting is a, well, the first thing, obviously, melting is purely a physical change. There is no chemical change. When ice becomes water, it's still H2O. So it's not going to be B or D. So A or C are your answers. And as you know, melting is clearly a reversible process because it can refreeze. So melting would be a physical change that's reversible. Question two. Interchain hydrogen bonding between peptide groups occurs in... Okay, now they've given you a choice of the four different types of protein structure. You must make sure you know these. A primary structure is simply the amino acid sequence. The secondary protein structure is where hydrogen bonding will cause folding to create things like alpha helices or beta pleated sheets. Tertiaries are where there's further folding, multitudes of forces, van der Waals or dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonds. You can even have ionic and covalence in tertiary. They are most of the proteins that you'll find in living things. And the quaternaries are the very, very complex ones that involve several tertiaries joining together. Um, anyway, in this particular case, interchain hydrogen bonding is a secondary protein structure. Question three, which product is formed at the positive electrode when a 0.1 mole per liter solution of aqueous copper uh, 2 sulfate is electrolyzed? Okay, you need to be aware that when you electrolyze, you will have um, positive and negative ions present. If it's aqueous, there'll be water present as well. So in this case here, what does it say? Positive electrode in electrolysis, this would be the anode. This would attract negative ions or water molecules. The sulfate ion, you don't have that in your data book. To be honest, it's a very difficult ion to discharge. So basically water will discharge at the uh, anode, the positive electrode. And if you look at your data book on page 10, I believe, I'm just bringing it up as I'm talking to you, you will find there, close to the bottom of the page with a value of plus 1.23, water will discharge and produce oxygen gas. So C is your answer. Question four, cleaning action of soap is impaired in hard water. Yeah, they asking some questions which are quite obscure, but that's QCA for you guys. Anyway, um, hard water contains calcium ions, and calcium ions react with the stearate ions in most soaps to form insoluble calcium stearate. Now, the calcium end basically will be the same as the uh, negative end of the carboxylate ion. And effectively, the calcium ion and the carboxylate ion of soap will react together to form an insoluble salt. And the ionic end of soap is hydrophilic. It's water-loving. So A will be the correct answer there. A 10 molar solution of ethanoic acid is best described. Well, clearly, 10 molar is very concentrated. But ethanoic acid is a weak acid. And therefore, we want C as our answer. Question six. Which type of atoms would be more likely to gain electrons based on its position in the periodic table? Well, question probably we can answer from year 10. Um, 
Non-metals obviously want to gain electrons to become uh, more stable by filling their shells. And the choices here are pretty obvious. It's got to be the halogens. Noble gases are not interested in electrons. Um, and alkali metals and alkaline earths are groups one and two. They want to lose electrons, not gain them. So 16 is A. Which of these is an amide? Make sure you know your functional groups, guys. Uh, a is a nitrile, CN is a nitrile, C triple bond N. NH2 is an amine, that's N, not D. Um, this is a salt, very unusual to see it written as this, but this is the ammonium salt of ethanoic acid, ammonium ethanoate. And that only leaves D. Now, usually you see the amide group as a CONH2, but if one of those hydrogens is replaced by um, an alkyl group like methyl, it doesn't stop it being an amide. So you can have um, primary amides, secondary amides, you can have tertiary amides, all right? The, you don't have to worry too much about that. But whenever you see a CO and an N next to each other, it's an amide. Question eight, that's a fuel cell. Hopefully you will recognize that. It's clearly an acidic one because it's using H plus ions in the electrolyte. So let's see what the question is. The operating conditions for the hydrogen fuel cell. Well, first of all, B and D are wrong because it's an acidic fuel cell. There's the hydrogen ions. And the hydrogen ions are present in the electrolyte. Okay, so C is the correct answer. A is wrong because hydrogen given off as an unused gas, well, hydrogen would definitely be used because it's a very, very important fuel. Question nine, again, probably something you did a long time ago. The alkanes, methane, ethane, and propane increase in boiling point as the lengths of the hydrocarbon chain increase. Now, these are non-polar molecules. There's no hydrogen bonding present, so A and B are definitely out. Now, intramolecular refer to chemical bonds, ionic, covalent, or metallic. These are intermolecular, forces that exist between molecules, and they are the weakest of these, the intermolecular forces, the dispersion forces. So nine is D. Number 10, which system at equilibrium will shift to the right if the total pressure is increased? Le Chatelier tells us that when you increase the total pressure, the system will shift to oppose the change. It will therefore move to try and decrease that pressure. It can do that by creating less gas, because less gas equals less pressure. We therefore want to find an equation where there's less gas on the right than there is on the left. Clearly it's not A, clearly it's not B. Uh, D has equal numbers on both sides. C is your answer. Okay, let's stop that for now and do the other 10 in a moment. How do I stop this thing? Let's have a look. <laughs> 